This here is a 2001 Kia Sportage. It's got a bit of a problem. A 2001 Sportage has a Mazda FE3 motor, which is 2 liters and has a double overhead cam. This particular FE3 motor has broken its timing belt. I've attempted to figure out if this is an interference motor or not, but I'm getting conflicting information on that. Uh, the arguments for it being a non-interference motor sound a little more solid than the ones that argue otherwise, but really we're going to have to just test it out and see. So uh, let me go grab the metric toolbox and start taking this thing apart. Okay, tools. What do I need to change the timing belt? Well, I need a 10 millimeter socket, 12 millimeter, no, let's see, yeah, 12 millimeter socket need a 14 millimeter socket need a 17 millimeter socket and a 21 millimeter socket a couple of extensions are good uh, I don't think I need one longer than this and a couple of rats uh, well one ratchet I did most of it with a short one having a long one's helpful to a uh, screwdriver pair of channel locks to remove the uh, spring clamps on the hoses and you know, a piece of firewood hammer It'd be good to have a, a, a open end box end wrench of each size too if you've got them removing the splash shield from under here is going to be essential it's held on by four 12 millimeter bolts Loosen the bolts holding your foot clan, your fan clutch assembly with a 10 millimeter wrench before you loosen your alternator belt. That will help keep the fan clutch from rotating before you get the bolts loose. Once they are loose, then loosen the alternator and pull the belt off. Now, the fan, fan shroud is held in by bolts that are also 10 millimeter. And these guys, the fan shroud and the fan, will come out in one piece, not one piece, but together very nicely. A 12 millimeter bolt down here on this pulley loosens it up so you can get this belt off, which in turn allows you to get this belt off that's around the alternator. At least in theory. There you go. That's two of the belts off. There is a third one there on the power steering. We'll get to that one a little later. Right now I'm going to focus on this water pump. This is held on by two 14 millimeter so uh, bolt uh, nuts. And surprise, it's not the water pump. It's just a water housing. And thermostat's probably in here. I'll replace it later. We'll just set this up here out of the way. Okay, I'm going to take this guy off next. This will loosen up this alternator bracket, but that shouldn't actually go anywhere. It'll just hang kind of loose there. And then I'll remove the, these two. This looks like a 14. These are 12. That bolt is a 17. So this part is held in by three bolts that look like this. They're all 17 millimeter. Okay. Now this thing has two, three, four, five bolts holding it on. I don't know, they look like 12 or 13 or something. Uh, I mean, you know, 10 or 12, one of the two, probably. It got pulled loose earlier. Get our belt all broken. Hmm, well, it looks like it's time for the power steering belt and the crankshaft pulley. The power steering down here has two bolts 
they're 14 millimeter. It's above and below the pulley and a couple cranks with a ratchet and the power steering comes loose. I am going to leave that belt on there until I get the pulley off. It'll be easier to get it off. But before that happens, I want to see if this is an interference motor. Crankshaft down, pulley down there, I moved it with this 21 millimeter socket until it's at top dead center. Now I'm going to rotate the cams. That takes a 17 millimeter. I'm going to see if they run into anything. Well, I'm not getting any interference there. Of course, that could just mean the valve's already broken up. No, seems good. Let me rotate the crank 180 degrees and do that again. Okay, I think that's 180 degrees. So I'm okay, I'm not running in. I'm not feeling any kind of evidence of valves running into anything. So the engine may be in good shape in spite of the broken timing chain. It's good because there's no excuse for an interference motor. That's just bad choices. There are six 10 millimeter bolts holding this pulley on. Uh, sometimes you need to block the motor from turning. I was able to jerk on these with a good fitting socket and get them loose without needing that. Now the pulley should come right off. You need to pound on it with something wooden. Um, I'm using a handle of my I need both hands. And that's not working. Firewood has many uses beyond just fire. There, came right off. There are two 10 millimeter bolts holding this guy on. would be normally the part where you pull the belt off if it wasn't already broken. Obviously, that's redundant. Oh well, yeah, there's this guy here too that helps keep the belt on. I'm removing this bolt here with my fingers. Didn't even need the uh, socket. I think that might be a tad on the loose side. Bearing's dry. You want to replace these idler uh, pulleys with the timing belt. Okay, that one's tight. This one's the tensioner pulley. It's got a spring on it. Don't lose the spring. You need that spring. Watch your speed. 